is Nan Tyneberg of the Palm Springs Public Library's Local History Project. Today I'm talking with Mr. Gail B. Thompson, a commercial photographer who moved to Palm Springs in the 1940s. Through his field of photography, Gail became involved in many aspects of Palm Springs life, public relations, entertainment, architecture, and communications. We are conducting this interview today in the, in the library, and the date is June 26, 1987. Gail, we're going to uh, look at your wonderful photography, your work, uh, the latter part of this uh, interview, but I would like to ask you a few questions first. You have lots of interesting things to say about uh, the 40s and Palm Springs. But I want to go back to Los Angeles. That is when you first came in contact with photography. You have a, a story about your first meeting with uh, the art of photography as a young man in Los Angeles. Well, at, I had a um, cousin who was going to the Fremont High School. He was taking up high, uh, photography and uh, he became quite successful. He went to work for Modern Screen, but before that he went to, well, during that time, uh, World War II was uh, in progress and uh, he went uh, overseas and came back and then he came down to the El Merida Hotel and I was watching his activity and I thought that seemed like uh, what I want to do. So I went over to the school and uh, they were still sending class, uh, the men out of their class into the service as photographers. I so I thought, well, uh, maybe um, I'll go and learn a few things about this commercial photography and so forth. This would be World War One. We're World War. No, World War Two. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, World War One goes uh, <laughs> way back when I was only about seven years old. <laughs> that is true. I was yeah. thinking then you learned yeah. your craft very now, quickly. <laughs> uh, the man, the gentleman who was teaching there, he had sent seven boys into service, and they were very successful and the government uh, was uh, bragging about the best photographer coming from Fremont High School. Anyway, um, I bought one of the cameras from one of the boys who was going into service mm -hmm. and uh, it was a, the best camera I ever owned. It was the sharpest and did real great work. Anyway, I was fortunate to get a hold of the camera and then I came to Pound Springs. Uh, I see. I, I was to understand that you have practiced photography in Los Angeles for several years before you moved to Palm Springs, but not really. No, no. I see. I just went to the, yes. to the night school there. I see. Well, excellent. And then what, uh, uh, you moved here, your your daughter was fairly grown and she was c finishing school in Los Angeles. She was in high school. In you, high you moved here with your, with your wife. Down here, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. to Palm Springs in um, 45 or, or right. Well, we came down here first time in 44. And uh, the second time we came down, I brought a, a trailer, what mm -hmm. they call a mobile home now, and I put it in the, uh, what was it, the Pioneer? Prairie Schooner? Yeah. Prairie Schooner Trailer Park. And that yeah. was your first, first home in Palm Springs? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your first studio? Oh, yes. Um, I. Uh, my wife was uh, making phone calls at the telephone office, uh, the LA telling them that uh, the family up there, that uh, we wouldn't be back from Palm Springs uh, for another day or two because we were extending our visit and they were enjoying it. And uh, while she was in her phoning, I went across the street to a studio to see what his display was in front of these windows. And uh, he asked me if I would care to come inside. He had more work inside. It was Mr. O.M. Ward who bought out Hannah. Mm -hmm in Palm Springs, and Hannah had the first studio, the first uh, camera shop in Palm Springs. And uh, he had bought out Hannah, and uh, while I was in there showing him, well, I came back down again and showed him some of my work. And he said, would you be interested in buying the studio? You do a good job. And he said, I'd like to have someone that uh, does work like you're doing it uh, to take, the take over my business. And I said, well, we'll talk more about it. So we did, and then I went across the street and asked my wife if she would come over and uh, and listen to our conversation and before we left his place, his establishment, uh, I left a deposit for the purchase of his studio. And there you were, right on Palm Canyon. Right on Palm Canyon. Yes. Two, uh, I believe it was 286 or 
386 Palm Northbound, right across from the uh, police from the police station at that time. I see. The fire department, police station, and the city office and the Desert Sun was all located on the other side of the street. And two of those establishments were uh, in regular small houses. I the see. Poli the uh, city office was a five-room small wood structure home and the uh, city office was kind of a little office building that uh, somebody had thrown up. Anyway, that's what they were using for the Desert Sun office. The Did paper was printed, I believe, in Banning at that time. I'm, I'm not sure. I know you were mm. involved certainly with, uh, with all of the circulation, oh, yes. the news, mm. news media. The Limelight and the Desert Village Resorter, or, yes. Reporter, all that. I'd, I'd like to ask you first about uh, the photostat machine that you introduced well, to the desert. You were a pioneer in so many aspects of photography and well, one was the photostat ma machine and you said it was in relation to Tony General. Uh, no, the, uh, the relationship was there that they were dismissing <laughs> the uh, uh, servicemen from yes. and of course many of the boys were getting out of the hospital up here at Tony and they were bringing in their their discharge papers and uh, for me to photostat so they could get recognition for disability and so forth, pensions. And uh, I was photographing but photographing them, but uh, they uh, said they should have the regular size uh, photostat. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I went into LA, found a friend that had borrowed a lens from off of a photostat machine at a war surplus station, a place out on uh, uh, San Fernando Boulevard was a war surplus. I went out there and uh, he had returned the lens. It was in the case, so I saw the lens and I asked the uh, uh, proprietor if he had the uh, camera to that, the photostat camera. And he said yes, it was out in the, uh, in the uh, yard there. And I went out and it was raining. Mm -hmm. He uncovered <laughs> it with a, with a huge piece Remember of plastic. Remember this vividly, don't you? Oh, and it looked like a monster because it was over, all machinery over five feet time. tall, oh the machine was, it was. And it would take a 1620 photostat. Well, you were certainly the first one to use this in the desert. Well, it had came off of the uh, old SS Oklahoma oh battleship. It was direct current, but I changed that all over and got a few ideas of my own <laughs> in there as far as lighting. And I brought it down here and with a few uh, supplies and a few uh, new parts, I was able to put up a real good photostat machine, which was the first photostat yes. machine on the desert. Right, right. And uh, then uh, the next experience was that they uh, were bringing their vellums over for me to photograph <laughs> because uh, the city had to have records of uh, all the uh, blueprinting. Right. And, uh, We'll get uh, into photostats of their tracings. Yeah, we'll get into blueprinting in a in a minute. Uh, I uh, back to Tony General. You had some interesting things to say about um, the POW camp and the crematorium, about which we've not heard too much. Uh, apparently, there was a crematorium. Oh, right? there certainly was. Yes, we have not heard anything mm -hmm. about that. I think that's well, interesting. That most there was a huge meat storage plant back in mm -hmm. there too, and I don't think people really knew no. about that. However, some of my pictures I can show you locations. Of course, at that time, uh, we didn't go around on the grounds much because uh, they were being patrolled and Certainly. keeping vandalism yes. away. And yes. uh, at that time, we were interested in uh, the conversion of the hospital back into the uh, right. And I will into the ask hotel. you about that. You yeah. were involved in in that as well. Well, I'm, I I will ask you. You. Uh, did a lot of publicity work for Ray Ryan. Well, he must have been a very dynamic man. Ray, he was a gentleman in every respect. Uh, uh, <laughs> he didn't keep all his money in the bank. He kept it in the <laughs> closet too, because <laughs> that's where he always got my pay from. Well, we we should we should uh, state that he he was instrumental in converting Twenty General back into the Elmira. Well, there was about five of them mm -hmm. that were uh, uh, Fitzgerald and, uh, and some of the gentlemen who were down at uh, Thunderbird came in and uh, bought stock in it. Uh, when Fitzgerald died, uh, Ray eventually, or in time, bought out the other stockholders and he was the sole owner of the El Mirador. And uh, he hired a publicity man for, uh, by the name of Joe Glaston. Mm -hmm. Now Joe, 
was a hound dog. Mm -hmm. He would not give any rest to anyone, mm -hmm. including myself. Uh, he was demanding, but he was a wonderful publicity man. So Too what, much. What life. was the what were the kinds of things that you you did when somebody came into town and stayed at the hotel? They they said take these people's pictures. Or uh, no, uh, Ray was more or less interested in promotional work such as developments. I see. So uh, that's where all the, the pictures The um, Palm Springs okay. Center out there, Ray did put up the bowling alley I deal. See. I see. And uh, the two Simons men was with yeah. him on that and signed, they were his attorneys and uh, they also worked with him on the uh, development of uh, of Bermuda Dunes. In fact, one so of the. So you do aerial photographs? I did everything. 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 I started aerials. I was doing aerials like crazy. I probably got something like three, or four yes. thousand aerial negatives. Yes, you. And are. many of them I've never even looked at. Pioneer in, in that aspect as well. Uh, let us talk about the the blueprinting. You well, pioneered that in the desert. That. Um, and you worked with architects naturally. Uh, well, as, as the. Uh, blueprinting, I bought a small machine because I couldn't photograph that too well and due to vellums, the light would go through the vellum and I fixed up a heavy glass and uh, on a lift and all and would drop it on the uh, vellums but even so uh, and photostat them mm -hmm. and photograph them too but uh, I finally got into um, thinking I've got to get a blueprint machine so I went to Tree Suite down in uh, Anaheim, mm -hmm. I believe it was, and uh, bought a small machine from them. Uh, they were getting a bigger one. The salesman was putting me wise to that. The Bruning salesman was. So finally, they said, "Well, you're getting too much work. Why don't you just <laughs> buy a blueprint machine, a big one?" So I did. Another large machine. I did. I bought one of the big monsters, and uh, that was quite successful. I did all the blueprints on the high school and gyms, and the addition to the high school and library, and. Uh, oh my. And just everything so, who were some of the architects that you worked with? Well, there were uh, uh, the first one that really helped me out a whole lot was uh, Stuart Williams, mm -hmm. uh, Harry Williams, mm -hmm. their dad, and Roger mm -hmm. Williams, and of course then Albert Frey and John Clark, and then there was William Cody. He was uh, you can believe it or not, but that Bill uh, uh, Cody was working out of a we might say a four room house. He had two men working for him. Uh, he had three children, a big dog and his oh wife, my. all trying to work in one little four-room house right across from the old library <gasps> where that uh, Fool's Folly uh, oh. home was built. You know, the foundation and the structure was put up that never was finished oh, by Mrs. Kellogg. Right. right. It's been called everything from Fool's Folly to the yeah. castle to uh, well, <laughs> no two windows, no two doors are the same size. <laughs> she was and quite a character. Did it looked you know awful her? spooky, and I didn't want to go around <laughs> it because I figured that. Uh, and she uh, well, had at her that dogs time there was too. there was a lot of uh, of snakes and things like that around, and that was a just a great spot for that sort of thing. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, I never messed around there, but I often <laughs> wish I had a went in and taken pictures. Yes. That uh, Mrs. Kellogg has a very strange ending in her life. Uh, and I hope that Mr. Bogart brings that out in his historical book because he's the one that he know, knew he her know quite it. well. Yes, yes. he uh, had mentioned I have her pictures of interviews. her and uh, her dogs, and uh, but I'm going to leave that up to him because okay. I figure that belongs to the history of Palm okay. Springs. Okay, all right. Uh, there is other history to be told by you. You talk about publicity for such places as the Ranch Club. Um, you took Trav uh, Rogers, uh, the ranch club, uh, has quite a history to it. And uh, I have the history, but again, I'm going to see what Frank okay. puts out in his book. All but right. I can tell you this, it uh, uh, seemed like the dem demand was down here was for service mm -hmm. at that time, because getting pictures out of here was uh, quite comp uh, complicated. And uh, I could get them out by putting, taking my pictures, developing them, uh, making prints, maybe I'd take the negatives to put them, take them down to the railway station at two o'clock in the morning mm. and putting them on the baggage coach, <gasps> taking the baggage coach numbers, coming back home, phoning the newspapers, which baggage coach it Great. was on, Great. and they would meet the train, take the pictures, put them on wire so we'd have them the next morning in New York City. 
so that's what helped me out. That's now, interesting. The Rogers deal, uh, uh, Stuart Hopps put on a party out there. He put on several parties, and it was Cowboys and Indian party, and boy, it was rough. <laughs> uh, Bill Gargan got cut <laughs> in the wrist because he'd started a, what we call, it was supposed to have started out as a snowball fight. It was slaw, cold slaw. Well, they were those big mixers, they were about three feet across, oh stainless heaven. steel, and they brought out two of them, set them on the table for everybody to help themselves. <laughs> Somebody took a handful of it and threw it at one of the Indians, and the Indians, oh he comes back and throws it one at the cowboys, and <laughs> the, the end of it was that you thought it was snowing around there for a yes. while. Before was that. Was it all in good fun? It was all in fun, yes. yeah, but somehow another one of the mug got broke, and. Oh uh, Bill Gargan got cut on the wrist, and we uh, I, t I was the only one that was sober, and, and I took him down to the police station, and uh, they took him to Banning to, because there were no doctors here at that time. Interesting. And this yes. was Saturday night, so they took him to, to uh, the uh, hospital up in Banning. Oh, my. And uh, that broke up, the kind of broke up the party. <laughs> but it was a funny thing uh, how that all started. Were women involved? What? Women involved? Oh, it's kind of a free for all, just for fun. <laughs> I yeah. see. Uh, I, you, you've been involved certainly in, in doing publicity work and photographing every golf tournament, as you yes, say. Yes. Um, Thunderbird has. Uh, well, been Thunderbird in. was uh, one of the, well, I guess, was the first to put on a uh, Palm Spring Classic golf mm -hmm. tournament. And before that, they had uh, uh, seniors members mm -hmm. and invited uh, guests in tournaments. Yes. I'm not so much interested in Thunderbird as I am in the first golf course in Palm Springs and you you have uh, a good record or uh, history of, of, of that as opposed to what most people think well, was the first golf course. The first golf course was the uh, Cambridge. Mm -hmm. Cambrick, um, uh, where, um, can't think of the gentleman's name that lives there. Uh, Culver? Nichols? Who? Mr. Nichols? No, Culver Nichols. His home used to be the clubhouse for the Cambrick yes. golf course. Uh, I have so pictures on up, that. Up in that area. It took, would yes. have taken me another 10 minutes to find the no. picture, maybe, but I <laughs> wanted to bring it along, but I <laughs> failed. We're going to be looking at quite a few. <laughs> yes. And uh, after uh, O'Donnell built his course and it was open to the public, uh, uh, they more or less abandoned the Cambrick. And Were you a golfer at that time? No, no, no. I just now? took a lot of pictures and, uh, and thought, oh, I'm not going to pick up a club until I have an instructor show me what to do. But I'm like all fools, I, uh, <laughs> on the game I tried it and... Uh, you got caught. I got caught, yeah. Did you take pictures of uh, any of the gambling houses? Were, were they... I took did you pictures. Did publicity for those people? I often looked over at the old uh, dooms mm -hmm. and seen that chimney standing there and thought I ought to get over and take a picture of that. Well, like everything else, too busy and I neglected too long and they finally bulldozed it down. Yes. However, I took pictures of the cove mm -hmm. and I have pictures of it. Uh, that's where the Elks Lodge is mm -hmm. today. Yes, Cathedral and, City. Uh, uh, 139? The 139 mm -hmm. Club, I took um, pictures, of, uh, I have a picture of that. Uh, Melrose uh, was yes. the uh, boss of that. Yes. Did, you, did you know the, well, you I must knew have Mr. Melrose, yes. He was sending me Christmas cards every year, and yes. uh, his wife, too. The strange part about this, uh, Mr. Melrose, his wife, uh, she, uh, I was asked to, by phone, to be at the Palm Springs Cemetery to take pictures uh, of a funeral there, at a graveyard yes. services at the uh, old Palm Springs Cemetery and I went over there and there was seven van loads of flowers came in. Oh my. Seven van loads. Wow. Flowers were m over the casket and all you couldn't begin to see the casket I don't know if I remember. I believe I have pictures of it. Anyway, they may have requested those pictures. I don't recall. Anyway, she sat, his wife sat 
the whoever was buried there. I never did find out. Uh, she sat, his wife sat in the front row, chairs, one of the chairs, and she sat there alone. Nobody sat with her. I sat next to her because I felt sorry for her. The woman weeping and all, and nobody sitting there. And so I just sat next to her and and uh, would mumble something occasionally, but uh, I don't remember what was said. Anyway, after the services, uh, I remember what she looked like, and uh, at a party about a year or two later, she had married Mr. Melrose. Oh, I see. The same lady, see? I see. She's living at the Racket Club, and I won't mention her name, but she's been married once or twice since, and Mr. Melrose died uh, about 1955, yes. Do you recall whose funeral this was? What? Was this her husband's funeral? That, that, do you recall? Yeah, yeah, I the see. first her funeral, first yeah, husband. yeah. I mm -hmm. see, I understand. Then, uh, let's see, there was uh, another gambling place opened up uh, on the corner of Andreas and uh, Indian Avenue, and I, uh, uh, old garage down there, and uh, yes, on the corner. Of that. Yes. I have a picture of that, yes. Yeah. And uh, then when Governor Warren Yes. Cl closed all the uh, gambling ships or shut them down in the harbor around Los Angeles area. Um, the uh, boys came down here and tried to open up this ah. gambling place down here. Yes. And of course they got chased out of there. I also have pictures of the gambling place over at uh, Two Bunch Palms. Oh yes. Oh, yes. And uh, I have several aerials of that showing the Seven Palms and uh, or no, no uh, seven, the, uh, what I'm getting into now is the Seven Palms. That's <laughs> the old bus stop down there, yeah. Well, you, you certainly worked with uh, many proprietors of many establishments, uh, namely Earl Kaufman and George Roberson, Nellie Kaufman's sons of the Desert Inn. You, you did some photography yes, for, the, for them. Yes, um, Magic Magic, I think it was called, Sports, oh. where I did mm -hmm. their their uh, photography work and their shows that they put on in the evenings and their uh, sessions and so forth. Yes. That was at the Desert Inn. That they at had the their convention end. at the we, Desert Inn. That, that was fairly was late, wasn't on it? On the Pitch and Putt course. I no, see. that was oh. uh, back in the uh, that was middle 40s. That went as far 40s. back as yes. the 40s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. oh, that's the first, I think, was held at the... Uh, at the uh, Colonial House. I see. Mm -hmm. And you have some stories about Ruth Hardy, who became the proprietress of the Ingleside Inn. Well, and she would often call you to take pictures of parties. And so Ruth was the greatest, uh, the greatest hostess of uh, Palm Spring could ever have. She was our Her first clientele. council woman. We should mention. She what? She was our first city council woman. Yes. Well, before that. Uh, mm -hmm. She uh, she had the very very best of the clientele, and uh, she threw parties. At probably you could at least four parties a year, and uh, I photographed all of those parties, all but one. The okay. person I didn't uh, I had other commitments, and I couldn't make it. And yes. uh, the boy that took the pictures for me, Johnny Frigori, I don't know if you knew him or not. No. <laughs> and he was real thrilled at the uh, idea of having the opportunity of going up there and shooting, and so he bought my wife a, a bottle of Chanel Number no. Five perfume <laughs> as a, a thank you a note. Yeah, and uh, That's nice. and I photographed all those parties for her. She had uh, about 30 volumes of. Uh, uh, in binders and all of uh, each party, date and all, mm -hmm. and the name of the party. Mm -hmm. And the hard part about Ruth's work was that uh, I had to take the pictures and take a lot of them. She wanted to always wanted a lot of pictures <laughs> and then process those so. pictures, number them, and have them back over her place the next morning oh so she could show it to her okay. her uh, people who were staying there. And they were probably leaving the afternoon or the evening and Sunday, and I'd have to have them there so she'd get orders from them. We should mention that not only were you working very hard all the time, but your wife as well. Well, mm -hmm. I was doing the photography, right? My yes. wife was doing the blueprinting and photostatic so work. So you were and busy 24 hours a day? And a well, we were doing, uh, we weren't getting enough sleep, that's for sure, but uh, we were trying, we didn't know, going into a new, uh, we'd never been in business before, and we just figured we had to please the customers, and uh, our customers were first. And the phone rang and we were going out of the door. Yeah. 
uh, we'd go back and answer the, yes. the phone or if the door rattled, we'd go back to see who yeah. it was. And many times, Bill Cody has came in, he was the one that would pull this on us. <laughs> At five o'clock, he'd phone us and say, don't close up, I got some prints and I've got to have them out the city office the first thing at eight o'clock in the morning. And uh, at seven o'clock, he'd say, well, we're not going to be able to get those up there right now. We'll hang around. Then about eight o'clock, he'd bring us over two big plates from the, from Chi Chi, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and say, here's your dinner and stick around a little longer. Well, by 11 o'clock, maybe he'd be there, maybe 12 o'clock. Oh, and we'd do his prints and we'd get home about 2, 2.30 in the morning and then back up there at nine o'clock. Well, the city was really burgeoning at that time, post-war, uh, and, and you were part of it. Uh, yes, it was because it was dormant, you might say, until after World War II. Yes, and you then were part of that growth. It began to to um, bubble up. Yes, in other words, you have a special affection for Zaddy Bunker, whom you photographed well, a great deal. The uh, funny part about Zaddy uh, Bunker and I uh, meeting her was uh, very strange. <laughs> uh, at that time, the city was uh, had their fire department. Uh, they were volunteers before that, and they had organized uh, and opened, uh, got a station and had a crew of about seven or eight men. And uh, uh, they were trying to clean up the city because of some behind, like behind the Chi Chi was a bunch of old buildings and the boys were, the, um, the a lot of Filipinos were sleeping there and, and it was getting to be kind of a fire hazard. And so the city said, we gotta clean this up. So I had to go back there and photograph all this trash and stuff. And they were moving some of the buildings out of there. And uh, Joe Leonard, who was doing all the moving of all the uh, barracks buildings, um, he took me back there and he showed me when he wanted me to, wanted to photograph this because he was trying to sell the building. He was buying these buildings and, and uh, moving them. And uh, so, he knew Zaddy was underneath one of these buildings and he called her and she said, I'll be right out. And there she comes out on her, laying on her back with a big pipe wrench in her hand, mm -hmm. on her hands and knees and in coveralls and uh, a bandana or something like that around her head. And I thought, my gosh, what's all this coming out underneath that building? <laughs> That's a and, uh, woman. <laughs> that was her, all right. Yes. And she, he introduced me to her then. And then on my, uh, we were, real friend because uh, I had taken her picture several times and uh, she, she yes. always put on her, you know, she write on there, you know, Gail, you flatter me and, uh, <laughs> and I like that. <laughs> and she, we got along real great. Well, she was certainly quite a pioneer uh, in Palm Springs and for many other reasons as oh. well, being a mechanic and an early flyer and all kinds of other endeavors. You were an admirer of Bill Fadden, who was Bill, an early uh, head of the Chamber of Commerce, was he not? Well, we called him the one-man Chamber of Commerce because Bill had terrific ideas. And uh, I know that when I would go by an insurance company's office and look down and see those pictures of accidents and things of that nature, I'd stand there and look at those pictures. And more than one reason was for captioning and, and for uh, perspective on, on uh, automobile accidents because it seemed like I was involved in taking pictures of the things mm. that I didn't like to take sure. but you had to yes. take for insurance purposes. I got some pretty sad stories about some of that mm. stuff. Yes. Anyway, um, Bill, he would uh, take pictures of um, events, uh, special people, and uh, he would put them up in, uh, I'd make up 11 to 14s, and he would make up posters and put them around into the bus stations, the railway stations, and the airports, and all, well, from here to San Francisco, San Diego too, Los Angeles. And uh, he was getting letters from all the uh, aircraft companies and uh, so forth, thanking him for these uh, pictures because they were drawing quite a bit of interest and helping publicize Palm Springs. And it was bringing in tourists too, because uh, it would show people sitting around and around the pool at, uh, in January and February. And back east, they were having snow blizzards, mm. and uh, that would bring people out Absolutely. here because they'd, they'd see those pictures at the airport, Essential. and they'd say that'd help sell Palm Wonderful. Springs. Yes. And uh, then he came out with the idea of uh, the Palm Springs Oscar. <gasps> and uh, it was a little cowboy <gasps> with, uh, with, I have pictures of that in the, uh, group here and that I'd like to yes. show one or two of them. 
You uh, you photographed Little Bear. She's been mentioned, but not no. often. And and was she a, a bona fide Indian or had? She said she was. I see. She definitely said she was. Yeah, and not a half. Uh, I should have listened more to her. Yes, because she was not really a part of the community, but she she came was in and selling out. herself. I see. And uh, she was a bit truthful about it. That's the part we yeah. thought. You know, it was a uh, it was about five characters in Palm Springs, and all of them were trying to give you uh, uh, a line of. Well, at that time, you thought it was just a, a line, you mm -hmm. know, like Harry Oliver. Well, Harry was authentic, although Harry was not. He was a set builder for one of the studios in in Hollywood, but he knew the tricks of the trade, and he knew he he knew how to be a character, and I he see. stuck to it was a character. Yes. And then we had uh, Fitzgerald, who was a hermit here in Palm yeah. Springs, yeah. and we had a couple of others, and of course there was Slim down in the south end of town. His mm -hmm. wife's still running that oh, museum. Sure. And uh, tell me he has a quite a few collect or she has a quite a few collection. And of course there's the McKinney boys and their mother and their sisters and and uh, yes, we've spoken to all I think oh, that you've was, mentioned. There was so many about. of them. There was uh, a lot of fun to be around. And yet yeah. there's still some older ones yet that I don't know even or never knew. These are we were we've been talking about local celebrities, local people, but you of course knew international and national celebrities. You were involved with Bill Holden. Uh, Bill Holden was a great guy. He was a never, and uh, I've asked him to do things that uh, you wouldn't think he'd be taking orders from, mm. <laughs> from me, but President Eisenhower says there's only one person I ever take orders from, and he says it's a photographer. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was poking his shirt tail once, and he stepped back and said, hey boy, what are you doing there? <laughs> I said, you wouldn't want me to take your picture of your shirt tail to get out, would you? And he laughed. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, Bill was uh, quite a friend of uh, Mr. Ryan, Ray Ryan. He mm -hmm. and one other gentleman from uh, uh, Switzerland was it? Uh, was a partnership in that uh, Monkinia Safari deal, and Bill liked the idea of that too, and uh, he liked too. hunting and all. And so we uh, ended up with a wonderful collection. Uh, Art collection. We did a lot of pictures of uh, Mr. Holden. First pictures out of Bing Crosby's uh, Blue Skies Trailer Park, oh. and he was a stockholder in that, I believe, too. You okay. photographed people like Lily Pons and Ginger Rogers and Terry Moore mm. and the Gabors. Yes, uh, <laughs> often the Gabors are. The, um, uh, I avoided them in many ways because uh, <laughs> I might not, shouldn't they say it, but uh, I well, didn't. Well, they like didn't avoid you. They wanted to. They have wanted picture pictures, taken. but to listen to them, they didn't want them, but they did. I wouldn't take a picture and then the first thing I know why I'd feel somebody tap them on my <laughs> shoulder and be one of them ask me to get a picture of Mr. So-and-so and so-and-so yes. with so-and-so. It was a, a bit of a game. You have wonderful pictures of the Hopes as a young family. Uh, and you admire Jane Russell and Linda Darnell and you have interesting things to say about Mary Pickford. Um, Mary uh, Pickford was a uh, she was uh, Einstein-like uh, when it come to the movie work because uh, she knew lighting idea and had ideas of lighting uh, as, uh, for photographing. It was just something else. Uh, her uh, positioning of, uh, of her subject, and uh, in other words, she was kind of like a, a real lighting director. She could. She was the one who invented the reflecting light system. Interesting. She, and, uh, she knew they'd every use, aspect of her. They used a uh, gold leaf on a board, uh, the, uh, and just cementing just parts of the uh, the sheets. They used to use the gold leaf on uh, for sign work, and that would uh, it was pure gold, mm. and uh, thin as a you can't imagine how thin that stuff was. And uh, they would uh, paste that on a board and they would have a board probably four by four. And the uh, 
gold would reflect the light, and of course it would flutter with a little wind, mm. and uh, would distort the the reflection of, of light to where you wouldn't believe it. And very soft lighting too, and, she and it was, was just able to beautiful. On and that was one of her ideas too. That's fascinating. Yes. And of course, white cards were used. Uh, she we were out at Thunderbird when she was staying out there, and uh, I had gotten a picture of her and. Mr. Bogert, and uh, she said, now, let's do one a little different. Uh, she said, let me take a picture of the photographer. <laughs> mm. And while she knew how. And uh, so she's holding the camera. Frank takes my camera and takes a picture <laughs> of her taking a picture of me. Oh, so that's I w wonderful. if I can find my negative, I'm going to put <laughs> it, who's a taking who? Classic, <laughs> classic picture. Yeah. You worked for uh, all of the circulations uh, at some point or another in town, the newspapers, well, the Desert Sun. I was the um, Desert Sun's uh, publicity and mm -hmm. advertising photographer. Do you remember who was writing for the Desert Sun at the time, or who was the who were the owners and the? Well, uh, yes. Um, the Chafees involved at that time. Uh, Marge Poe was doing an awful lot of that at the, and uh, of course. Now, when I would take pictures, they would come to me and ask me to give them pictures, and uh, that kind of went against the grain because uh, uh, I figured that once it gets in the paper, mm -hmm. there's no sale of my pictures, see? And then uh, uh, there was, I can't think of the name of the people that uh, were working at that time. Bill Rochelle was one of mm -hmm. the uh, older ones. Mm -hmm. Um, and Peg was the Bill was a hound dog too. Yeah. He one uh, night out at the uh, ranch club, uh, Howard Hughes was there, and he had three bodyguards there. And we wanted to picture Bill, wanted to picture Howard Hughes. Yes. And uh, the bodyguard came over to me and said, uh, "If you flash one globe, he said, I'm gonna smash your camera." Oh dear. And Bill says, "Come back around." He says, "We're gonna get this picture." I said, no. He says, "Well, look, I can. We can get this picture." So I'll go in and. Uh, if they start a fight, you get the picture and then run. I said, no way. I'm not <laughs> taking any chances because pec cameras were not available. They were on priority. Uh -huh. And my other four by fives were, so sure. I wasn't about to take a not chance on getting mine injury. smashed. No. Yes. Interesting. But I did get a picture of he and uh, in a distance in a smoke filled room upstairs over <laughs> the, um, in the theater part of the. Uh, uh, the Talking uh, about Howard ranch Hayes. club, yeah. Yes, he floated yeah. in and out of town. And uh, he was with the, uh, I believe, it was Senator Krug. That was the senator's name, and he was in charge of Indian affairs. And of course, Hughes was wine and dine in him because he wanted to get some of this I Las see. Vegas property. I see. And uh, yes, there's politics, though. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. always. We have in front of us uh, an early directory, maybe if you hold it in, in front of you, and this you, you've revived it. You uh, Yes, uh, it was pretty well scrapped up. I got this original, and I gave it back to him, to Mr. Earl Neal, who has the uh, Palm Springs Nursery here in Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. His dad came down here in 42, uh, or not 40, but 1902. Oh, four, or 1902, two, or something yes. like that. Yeah. And he uh, bought a ranch, or a large piece of property down in Coachello Valley. And then when the uh, water from the uh, Colorado River broke through and started flooding the uh, Salton Sea area, it flooded his property. And he uh, was raising, uh, it Growing huge fields of uh, of cantaloupe and uh, alfalfa for the seed to uh, market the mm -hmm. the seed yes. and the alfalfa seed too, and uh, when he got flooded out, he just put the children all in those five of them. There's four girls and one boy, including Earl. That was Earl, and the family and brought him up to Palm Springs and bought a home up here yes. and uh, opened up. Uh, a nursery on Indian Avenue, yes. about where uh, Stockwell and Benny is today. Mm -hmm. Stockwell and Benny was originally uh, the building that, it, that Stockwell and Benny was built by uh, uh, a Buick dealer, oh my. Simons, oh. and that big lighted front was where oh. Mr. Simon used to put his cars. And then Simons was sold out to Art Bailey, who had the Desert Laundry, <laughs> and uh, Art was quite a. Uh, 
had uh, quite a uh, name here in Palm Springs. Um, uh, that name has not come up before. And uh, well, it uh, he has quite a bit of history, and he was quite a friend of Mrs. Uh, you I'm want just to going. Well, I'm going to look. I'm just going to read a couple of these names. Uh, this is again. This is January 1930. That I guess Earl Neal gave to you, and you. Uh, I revived you it. You revived uh, it. But I think it's the names are are there's of course Humphrey Burge, and Philip Boyd and Walter Bunker, I'm just going down alphabetically. The Chafees are mentioned, um, Coble, Cody, Cree. Raymond Cree. Raymond Cree. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just see. We have the Goth, the Goths Hotel, the Hicks, Coker is mentioned, Kellogg, Licken, McKinney, just Oasis Hotel, Parker. Those are people who had phones, of course. It's not yeah, even direct. That's true. Them, you know. that, that's true. The Steins. Uh, now remember the Palm Springs. The Wicks. The Hicks uh, Biller, Biller Supply. They had just three numbers on their phone. <gasps> the early days. Well, we're going to look at some of your pictures and we'll have more commentary and uh, we'll, we'll look at some of your wonderful work. We'll look at some of these uh, photographs and Gail, if you would, explain what we're looking at. Well, this is some of the stock negatives I have in my files from the uh, HANA and the uh, O.M. Ward files that uh, Mr. Ward turned over to me when I bought the business. This is uh, section 14 in Palm Springs, uh, taken about 1934. Uh, you can see what the vacancy in there, the you know, Chino Canyon in the background, and of course this is the Chino Canyon here. The El Mirador is up in this area here. Now the next photograph, that was taken about near Ramon, and uh, which is now Farrell Drive, shooting into the pass area. This here is the El Mirador Hotel. Uh, at the extreme right there is a curve going out of Palm Springs and of course the road in front of the hotel uh, ends uh, about, uh, let's see, I call Chino, yeah, Chino Drive there, Chino, Vista Chino. Yes. And uh, that's Indian Avenue and Vista Chino. The road ends there. Charlie Farrell, Mr. Farrell bought the Racket Club uh, property right about here. He bought 53 acres, sold uh, 33 acres of it, and uh, still had 20 acres for and his Racket Club. This was taken. Um, and this was taken about 1929. Right, and these you inherited. These these are not ones that you took. Beg your pardon? You inherited these. These are not. Oh ones. no, these are not mine. Right. No, these are some from Hannah, yeah. and yes. uh, perhaps these yeah. were Hannah takes. Yes. Um. This is another one of the uh, El Merida Hotel uh, showing going south. And of course this in here is the uh, O'Donnell Golf Course area. Mr. Now these pictures here are before they ever built the uh, prisoner of war barracks there and the Torney Hospital. Uh, El Merida was converted to a Torney Hospital. That was taken uh, 1936, this picture here was. This here I took uh, in 1945. They've just started developing the dream home area. This is it here, showing the um, pattern of the streets as they had just paved it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was a city dump here. And uh, <clears throat> it had to be abandoned, it caught a fire and burnt for about 20 years or more, but it's out now completely, and that was supposed to be converted into a playground area. However, no development has taken place there yet. The uh, other dark strip you see there is the uh, Palm Springs Airport, which there's practically no buildings at all there. Right. Then I believe in here is some of the, there was a couple of large hangars built there. This is an interesting photo showing, um, now these were taken later 
in the uh, 40s and early 50s. Yes. Now these here are the South Palm Canyon area. The, all the uh, real, well, land, people have bought land down here in perspective uh, ideas of development uh, is the South Palm Canyon area. And uh, this, of course, in here is where the, the uh, Canyon Country Club is now. As we go along, this was taken. Yes, I love the sequence. You see the growth. Yes, uh, just to show the growth of Palm Springs and development as it went along. This was taken in the 50s. This was in 50s, too. Just showing the growth of, of the Palm Springs southern part of the Palm Canyon as it goes along. You notice down in here how to develop the golf courses and now they got a north and a south going there. And uh, I believe that back in here seemed like there's more than one there. Yeah, there, yeah, we're at, there yeah. is another development. Yes, growing down the valley. Beg your pardon? Growing down the valley. I yes, it is. The then the Andreas Canyon, the one they're contemplating on building another big development back in there is uh, still, I think, under discussion because of the uh, Indian uh, burial grounds and so forth. Yes. Then we go into some of the old hotels. This is the Oasis Hotel, mm. and it's a very good picture. These pictures were made Beautiful picture. in uh, earlier days. Uh, were taken. I had the camera, and I sold it. I wish I had kept it because it had the, probably the, one of the sharpest lenses of uh, any camera that uh, any of the photographers had ever worked with. You can see the detail in here is so sharp. It's beautiful. The tower here, the the uh, ivy that grew up on that tower has not begun to even start on it yet. This picture has been uh, copied and all so many times, but these were originally photographs uh, by Hannah that were, postcards were made, they were, photographs were made into postcards. That's why you see the lettering on it. I see. And they were sold at the studio, including uh, when I bought the place. This is the El Merido Hotel back in the uh, 29 and 30. Uh, the cactus gardens out in the front. Those cactus gardens are, uh, were taken out in about 36. This is an early picture of Frank Sinatra and uh, Jimmy Davis. Uh, Jimmy, he wrote... This, uh, is, this is your specialty. You yeah, this take, was my uh, type of work, uh, was doing the publicity. So well. yes. uh, the reason I did so much publicity is because I didn't have a chance to get out and do on my own um, because I was down here to make the buck, and uh, and uh, publicity was my line of work. Mm -hmm. And that was, if you remember, Bill Davis or Jimmy Davis, he was the governor of Louisiana, oh, yes. and Sinatra was a spoiled brat. <laughs> Young there, and he did all right though. Picture. Yeah, I was jealous of him. <laughs> uh, this was the uh, father and two sons. Uh, Mr. Harry Williams. Uh, we were sitting at the Rotary Club one after one at noon time, and uh, Mr. Williams was asked, "Would he rather be back in in uh, his office Dayton. in the oh, East, Dayton? Yes, uh, with his secretary. He had to go through three secretaries to see him. Would he rather be back here at the desk or be out here and be just Harry Williams?" He said, "I'd rather be out here and be Mr. Harry Williams." He built the Carnell buildings and the plaza. And uh, uh, was known for, uh, well, he built General Motors plant back east. He was uh, 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 tr extremely uh, well educated architect. Mm -hmm. And that's Stewart on the left and uh, Roger on the right. On the right, yes. Uh, it's a nice picture. Any home or building that Stewart, Rogers, were involved in, it could stand any kind of an earthquake because Stuart said, I could build houses like some of the architects down here are doing, but he said, Rogers won't go for it. He says, it's got to be architectural safe. 
and that was uh, Roger's idea of building homes. That's why they got the high school building, I think, too. This was um, during, uh, in the uh, early 40s, the Governor Warren, I said before, closed down the uh, gambling ships out on the coast, on the harbor, around the Long Beach Harbor and Santa Monica Harbor, um, Santa Monica Bay there. Excuse me, Gail, do you want to put it a little closer, a little closer toward the camera? That's uh, fine. Yeah, okay. Now this building here is an old garage that was on the corner of uh, Andreas and uh, Indian Avenue. Uh, those boys that were on those gambling ships uh, came down here and uh, tried to start gambling in this garage here. And uh, of course we had the uh, uh, the Cove and the uh, <coughs> 139 Club. We had the old uh, Cove out on, uh, let's see, on um, Date Palm Drive, the one down, no, that was called the Palm, what was, the Dooms, yes. Oh, yes. And then we had the uh, uh, <coughs> one built over in, um, in the uh, Desert Hot Springs area, or mm -hmm. I believe that was south of that quite a bit, called Two Bunch Palms. It did have a walk-in vault over there. <gasps> because I was there, photographed it, but they, like I said, I didn't know whether I had negatives on that or not, because everything I took there, I think they requested I give it to them. I didn't know what it was all about. <clears throat> but I remember the, um, the walk-in vault was uh, uh, directly behind the pool at the, that would be the north or northwest side of the pool. I have pictures of the uh, house that was built, but it never went into gambling because Warren had, outlawed the idea of gambling. We had slot machines down here like crazy. Every hotel office, and or just about, had a slot machine in it. Every restaurant had a Is slot machine. Is that true of Palm Springs? Yes. Well? Drug stores had the slot okay. machines. Liquor stores had what there were. They, they had a slot machine. It's interesting. <clears throat> they were all taken out and then they were replaced by, by jukeboxes. <laughs> and uh, Harold Murphy had charge of all that. In fact, I still have the trailer that they used to haul the old slot machines around in. Oh my. And uh, I bought the trailer from uh, Harold, uh, Harold Murphy when he went out of business. Here's a this here is an old, great an old plane, plane used to haul passengers out at what was called the Palm Springs Fly Field. The Fly Field wasn't called an airport. It was just a strip of land out here on uh, Section 14. Cleared and, uh, and this would be around 40. Oh no, this was uh, uh, about 39. Oh, 39. so this was not your picture. Not my either, picture. No, no, it's one of my collection. I and they were also <coughs> taking the mail in because it was easy to go to the field and give them the mail, and uh, and uh, not uh, drive all the way down to the station. That plane, particular plane, was used in World War II and. Uh, uh, states on the uh, mm -hmm. caption that it's at the bottom of the of the Atlantic Ocean now. Oh. This here is a picture of uh, Roosevelt's fourth term. Mm -hmm. uh, we opened up a radio station here in Palm Springs in in '45. We started building it, and in '46 it was completed. This here is a picture in the office of the Desert Sun. This is and wonderful. And uh, all those people can be identified. Uh, mm -hmm. We won't take time to do it now, but here we have the time, the date, what they're doing, the station, and uh, these are election returns here. And uh, it's five after nine is time they could start counting the votes then. <coughs> this is a parade picture um, taken back in the 1945. You can see the Gale mm -hmm. studio here, there and uh, <laughs> uh, I can't think of the gentleman's name. Uh, he had the hotel down here. Uh, let's see, I got the name back here. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Stanley yeah, Rosine. Stan Rosine. Yes, yeah. I can't say. Stanley I Rosine. Far away. Yes. Yeah. That's that's. And that's his daughter. They only had the one daughter at that time. Now Stan, Reed and I 
show his pictures because Stan always put a good, enjoyable, fun float in the, every parade we ever had down in the Western Week and he also had them in the uh, Circus Week parades. And uh, the book that I'm putting out, I'll have several of Stan's good. floats in the we pictures. We have interviewed, of course, Stan. Yes. Mm -hmm. But not in connection with the hotels. And there's the Prairie Stan Store. Stan had the uh, Del, uh, not Del Talk, but the Taquas Vista Hotel, mm -hmm. and he had That's one across right. the street, too. This here is my trailer here when we came to Palm Springs. Uh, we call them trailers in those days. <laughs> <laughs> and. Of course, the covered wagon is. Yes, yeah, it was right behind, right in front of my place. Yeah, and uh, we thought nothing of it. Uh, so many, many of the people were living in uh, mobile homes at that time, or trailers at that time. And if you had a trailer with a cabana, uh, you were kind of like one of the four hundred, because there wasn't many houses down here. So I understand. And they were at a premium if you could get one, but nobody had any money. <laughs> and uh, that's just the way the that's just the way it went. That was uh, called the Prairie Schooner Trailer Park. Yeah. And then we get into golf, yes. which Palm Springs is so famous for. And uh, one time we were called the golf capital of the world, and uh, now we got. Uh, Something like uh, with what is planned and all over 80 golf courses down there when it used to be only a matter of, uh, you can count them on one hand. When, when I came down here, we only had three. Mm -hmm. mm. So, so that's that, an early driving range. Big your pardon? This is an early driving range. For the yes, that uh, was out on practically over about where it uh, would be an off road, uh, which would be Farrell Drive now out towards the airport between Ramon and uh, and uh, McCollum Way, yes. Well, we're going to go shortly into the larger pictures and I'm going to move the camera and get a little closer. Now, my reasons for showing this picture here, this was taken at a broadcast of uh, Jack Benny's and it shows Al Jolson and um, Jack Benny looking at uh, this magazine I have laying here, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, the reason there for- There is yours truly on the- and <laughs> uh, the um, the reason for this, <clears throat> uh, Benny was showing. Uh, no, Jolson was showing what he said. The way he said it, uh, I have a picture showing my shack in this magazine, and he was showing it to Mr. Benny, and uh, uh, I was showing it to Mr. Jolson, and Benny walked over and and uh, he says, "Well, I have a picture of my house, uh, but." Uh, I said, no, we don't have it in this magazine. However, I have the picture of his home with me. Um, now, this magazine was put out for the Desert Circus uh, Week. And this was a magazine here. Now, the magazine was printed up by the uh, Villager magazine, uh, George Wheeler, uh, it was composed put together by Alex Morrison, uh, who did a lot of, uh, of golf instructing. In fact, I think Mr. Morrison has written the Bible on, on golf. He is so, he's just Mr. Golf through and through. Nothing but got to be done his way too. In this magazine is a picture of the tramway mm. as the way we started it out. This. Uh, part here was models. We started out with just sticks and frames and uh, then models were built and set in the place. The uh, photographs were made, 11 by 14 or 16 by 20s. Bud Graves, a, a local artist who did all the, most of, a, a tremendous amount of the covers for the Villager magazine, he did the artwork and did a tremendous job. Um, Mr. Wheeler got letters from subscribers saying, how in the world did you get pictures of the tram before it was built? <laughs> and uh, so that's why these were put in there to explaining how it was all done. Fascinating. And uh, 
We'll go from there now to more pictures on the one of our very first desert characters uh, and a little lady who tried to do more good in promoting Palm Springs and its youth organizations than anyone can ever believe. That is Little Bear. That is Little Bear. And her, what was her real name? Did you or her? As far as I know, I should dig up her biography, and I haven't, but... Uh, uh, she was known by, as Little Bear by everybody. By just about everybody, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. She told me her past so many times, and I never paid too much attention around, because I think we all feel like we're going to be here forever, mm. and that's a big mistake. The next photograph is, we're just going to pick these out sure. of random. That is um, um, Zaddie Bunker in a rocking chair <laughs> at the Palm Springs Airport. And of course she has Mrs. McManus. And believe it or not, they, uh, they went out for a little ride. I don't know how Mrs. Mm -hmm. McManus felt in that plane, but with Zaddie she was with a, a real pilot. And she flew across the United States and was greeted by the president, you know, back in Washington, D.C. on her at the one end of her flight. She made the round trip and uh, got quite a bit of uh, world-known publicity out of doing that. This is the gentleman who built the Riviera, or the uh, El Merida Hotel, Penny and the home which he lived in at the time he built. Mm -hmm. I was called out the airport for a quickie. Found out it was oh. Nancy, uh, Frank Sinatra, and little Nancy as she was called, and Nancy, Frank's first wife. And that's when we had the little old stair step ladder to get into the planes at the Palm Springs Airport. That was Western Airlines, as you can see. That was our uh, Nancy and the daughter's first airplane flight, taking their first flight by plane. Hmm. This is one of Hannah's photographs. That is Mr. Einstein, Dr. Einstein and Mrs. Einstein at the El Merida Hotel when they had the cactus gardens in the front of the El Merida Hotel. This picture here, I'm sure Mr. Bogart, Bogart is putting in his history mm -hmm. book. Well, it's interesting too that Harold Hicks talks about meeting Einstein when he was w happened to have been at the El Mirador and Einstein was waiting in the one of the offices mm -hmm. and he relates the story of meeting him and talking with him for about a half an hour. Well, what a thrill it was. I know nothing about uh, this is just some of the yes. uh, that was my treasured the collections I got from the Hannah wonderful. and the, and the uh, Ward negatives which I received in, when I purchased the uh, the studio. This is uh, one of the children's pet shows, Circus Week, and that is Rin Tin Tin and of course uh, Duncan, his trainer, Earl Kaufman, uh, Leo Carrillo, and that is uh, uh, little Trav Rogers, uh, that is Trav's grandson, I believe Trav's, yeah, kneeling there. And Traz Boy had the um, little uh, red wagon, <laughs> which he used in the parade. And uh, I kind of forgot how the uh, story went on that. Um, but well, I, the interesting thing is a beautiful shot of the uh, hotel the tower in the background. Yes, really situates them. That was right after the uh, hotel was um, turned back in. No, it was still Torney Hospital at that time, yes, it was. Mm -hmm. It had been abandoned, but it was still called Torney Hospital. Now, the children that put on the um, pet show, 
brought their pets and all were invited down to the um, to the um, Plaza Theater and Roy Randolph uh, set the picture up for me and uh, we took pictures of course Roy was uh, thinking about getting these children in on on a dance class like the Megan <laughs> Kitties in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, they were used in the movies quite a bit and uh, Mr. Randolph was a choreographer at the uh, studios in Los Angeles and he knew a lot about dancing. The names of the children are all identified there. That was a newspaper print I cut out at the time uh, the, um, when the picture was taken. The next photograph is a very interesting one. That is uh, um, Mrs. Uh, Cor uh, Miss Cornelia White turning the deed over to, uh, what was this gentleman's name here? Let me get my glasses. His name was uh, Earl. Well, when is Earl Hoover? Hoover. Yes. Yeah. Desert Museum director. This is in Cornelia to the White. Museum, yes. And William Colburn. I took this picture down in front of the old uh, historical history or museum, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, that was, that's back, or where it was at that time, was back of the uh, the library, the Murray Library. There's a strange, you can hear so many stories about the uh, Takwas Falls. The Indians, had different ones had different names for it. This was called the Takwas Falls. The, the Indians' stories was that the um, that was Princess Takwas. It looked like a crown, her hair flowing back of her head, and then she was running from Prince Takwas, which sometimes was called the Witch. That's the Takwas Canyon shadow at the uh, entrance of the Takwas Canyon at certain times of the day. Late in the afternoon you get a shadow and it looked like uh, an Indian with a tomahawk or uh, some of them call the, some of the Indians call it a witch. I don't know if the Indians did or not, but anyway, they, I think they liked the idea of Chief Takwas because it had more of an Indian sound to it. And this was Princess Takwas, the Takwas Princess. And it was running, she's running from the prince. <laughs> There's quite a few stories about that, oh, yes. and this is a this is early picture of the El Mirador Hotel. The uh, old car you can see there, how the tower was lit up and all at night time. And uh, in those days, we could not get color film because uh, the um, government had priority on all color film and uh, it was just not possible to get uh, any film unless you bought outdated film and uh, it was usually no good. <clears throat> One of our small restaurants down here and night spots was Earl and or not Earl but George and Ethel Streeby. That's one of his little race cars that he was, one of his toys that George had, and Ethel in front of the dollhouse. Mm -hmm. What a great picture. Ethel was always admired at her, for her legs. <laughs> she had beautiful legs, and then of course we used those legs and and other pictures, which was fun because we had a, the Villager magazine ran one of her head covered up, just showing her legs, and then they put out a, 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 a prize for the picture. one who could identify her legs, you know. <laughs> and guess who it was? I couldn't guess who it was. This is an early picture of the uh, racket club uh, at the poolside, showing um, uh, a 
style show. I don't know why I waited so long to take this picture. And of course, you'd take so many, and then the first thing you know, you're out of film. Uh, Mr. Bogart, Bogart, there you can see him right here. He was emceeing, and at the end of the show, I'm sitting there with my mouth wide open, and Mr. Farrell walks out. Charlie Farrell walks out with fully dressed tuxedo, spats, cane, top hat, and all. Walked out the end of the dive board, pretended he lost his balance, and fell in the pool. Showman. <laughs> I wish I'd have gotten a picture of that, but <laughs> I was so amazed I couldn't even think what I was doing. I'd never seen anything like that before. This is one of the early pictures of uh, perhaps it's a, probably a Hannah picture. Yeah, I see. Is the light hitting all right on that? Uh, yes, if you move it a little forward. Forward? Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, okay. That's one of the uh, early mm -hmm. pictures of a basket weaver down here in the... Uh, Indian Reservation, taken right on section 14, and um, those baskets, if you have one today, it's worth mm. uh, a few bucks, mm. believe me. I'll leave the names and all that up to mm -hmm. Mr. Bogart for his book, because I think uh, Frank has saved so much of that stuff that he's deserving of, uh, of all the uh, acknowledgement that uh, he knows and can give you. This is a building here, was built by the government during World War, uh, World War II times, and it's out at the airport. And that's where the Palm Springs City Council held their very first meeting in 38. I believe it was in August or, or no, August the 38th, yes. And uh, I don't know, I don't know the building out there now, I'm sure it's not. Mm -mm. This picture here is the old-time breakfast rides. We used to have those quite often down here, and they were, how's that for focusing about Perfect. right? Perfect. Then the um, covered wagons were left there, and uh, they would have maybe as many as four breakfast rides in a week's time. Different hotels would organize, and their guests would all go out on hay, uh, hay what they call those? Hay wagons, hay wagons, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, tally hose and uh, uh, stagecoach, anyway, and horseback, and of course automobiles too. You could get out there. That was out on South Palm Canyon, uh, and about uh, just before you get up to the gates of the uh, the canyon. Yeah, the canyon, yeah. Mm -hmm. What they call it? The bench, I believe, didn't they? No, oh, I don't believe they did. They had another name for it. Then, getting back into the old days, in the 40s, I took this picture, one of the first I took when I came out here. This is a stunning picture. Uh, the, um, uh, that was the Skeet Range. That's out there between, uh, it was an off-road, probably about Farrell now, and uh, about, uh, about Farrell Drive between, off Ramon, um, between Ramon and Highway 111. Um, that was quite popular. The uh, man with the gun is Frank Bennett and his daughter Dee Dee. Mm -hmm. And uh, this gentleman here, I sorry I can't remember his name, but I do have his name at home. Is Melba Bennett? What? Is his wife Melba Bennett in the picture? No, she's not in the I picture, see. no. Mm -mm. <clears throat> That's wonderful. Um, this gentleman here was like uh, Schumann. He uh, was self-styled. He wore the same type of clothing all the time, a white hat <gasps> and uh, shirt and uh, same type of slacks. Well, well, Mr. Gail Thompson, we thank you very much. Your pictures and your stories have been marvelous and I'm sorry to make you a veteran of World War One. I. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't you, bring that one of the showing the barracks at the uh, El Marta Hotel but uh, you have thousands and thousands of pictures. I probably have somewhere around two to three thousand pictures. We will look forward to your book. Well I uh, there won't be but one. It'll be uh, maybe six books for the time. We look forward to your six volumes. Okay. Thank you again. Thank very you. Much.